So, we're finally here in the great city of Copenhagen. Here you can see the Little Mermaid. Uh, the story about the Little Mermaid was written by H.C. Uh, uh, Andersen, uh, who also lived during the same time as uh, Søren Kierkegaard. You probably wouldn't say they were friends, because Søren actually wrote a stinging critique of one of his books. Uh, here he says, Displeased and dissatisfied as he is with the real world, he tries to gain vicarious satisfaction in his own timid, poetic creations. Like La Fontaine, therefore, he sits and cries over his unhappy heroes who are doomed to perish. And why? Because Anderson is the man he is. The same joyless fight that Anderson himself have fought in his life is now repeated in his poetry. The first half of the 19th century is sometimes referred to as the Danish Golden Age. And it wasn't just in writing. So you have Kierkegaard, Andersen, and also in painting you have Christopher Wilhelm Eckersberg and in music, Hans Christian Lumbi. All of these people were active in the early part of the 19th century and created wonderful arts even though this was a very poor time economically in Denmark. Denmark being allied with Napoleon, Great Britain attacked Copenhagen with great force in 1807. Maybe it is like they say, hard times brings great arts. So now, let me take you back to this exciting place and time in history. On the 5th of May in 1813, Saren Orbe Kirchgård was born somewhere around here in Nytorv in Copenhagen. Having a rich father enabled Søren to get a proper education at the School of Civic Virtue. And it's most likely here where he began his interest in philosophy, since they taught him ancient Greek. His object of study was for instance Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey, but also the New Testament which originally was written in Greek. So it's probably at this school where he heard the name of his favorite for the first time, Socrates. Søren's father, Mikael Peter Kirchgård, uh, was a rich merchant. He was married to Anna Søren's daughter Lund, and together they had seven children, which five didn't make through adulthood. So by the time Søren turned 21, five of his siblings had already passed, and also his mother. In 1830, Søren was admitted into the University of Copenhagen, where he began studying theology. So it was here, at the University of Copenhagen, where Søren intensified his studies in both Greek and Latin. The whole Kierkegaard family suffered a great deal during this time. With six of its members dead, Søren started to believe he was being punished by God for his father's sins. During his studies, his father passed away. This impacted Søren greatly. He 
here he says in his diary. 11th of August. My father died this Wednesday at 2 a.m. I would have so greatly desired to wish that he would have lived a couple of more years, and I see in his death the last sacrifice he made for the love of myself. For he is not dead from me, but dead for me, in order for me to make something of myself. Of everything I've inherited from him is his memory, his explanatory picture, explained not by what I've conjured up in my fantasy, for it is not needed. It is explained through the amount of small features that I now know. This is the dearest inheritance that I want to keep as secret as possible from the world. Right now, I feel there is only one person with whom I can really talk about him. He was a faithful friend. Another major thing that happened during his studies was that he met for the first time the big love of his life, Regine Olsen. Love struck him very hard. Here's an entry from his diary. Though my heart's empress, hidden within my heart's deepest chamber, in my deepest thoughts, where it is as far from heaven as it is to hell, unknown God. Alas, can I really believe what the poets say? That when you see the object for the first time, one believes that you've seen it long before. That all love, just like knowledge, is recollection. Everywhere, in every girl's face, I see traces of your beauty, and I think that I must have a collection of every woman's beauty to extract yours. In September of 1840, Saren and Regine got engaged, and at the same time of their engagement, Saren was working diligently on his master thesis on the concept of irony. So here he sits, right next to the Royal Library. What a suiting place. In August of 1841, Søren suddenly breaks off his engagement to Regine. Uh, it comes suddenly, but for reasons that we will discuss further on. Uh, but here, here's an entry from his diary. I believe that you can call my relationship to her, in a true sense, as unhappy love. I love her. I own her. Her only wish is that I should stay with her. Her family begs me. It is my highest wish that I must say no. This was quite the scandal at the time, especially for Regine. During the 19th century, breaking an engagement was very shunned upon. And the blame usually ended up on the woman even if it was the man committing the breakup. But Søren did his best to make sure everyone knew that all the blame was on him. This big breakup with Regine clearly, clearly affected Søren's writings as well. Uh, here he says in his book, Stages on Life's Way, she can despise me, Lord God, that is what I want, that is what I'm working on. But still, I shiver in fear for the thought of living in such martyrdom for a lifetime. Here at the Museum of Copenhagen, they have a permanent exhibition of uh, Søren Kirkegård. They have, even have a few memorabilia from his life. 
For instance, here you have the actual ring that Søren gave to Regine when he proposed to her. And this is Søren's writing style. Wonder which books he wrote with this pen. And these are the keys to his apartment in Nytolv. After his split with Regine, Kirchgård traveled to Berlin to continue his studies and also attending lectures led by the renowned philosopher Friedrich Schelling, rival of the great Friedrich Hegel. During his time in Berlin, he also started writing probably one of his most important books, the book Either Or. In March of 1842, Søren returns from Berlin uh, and in the same year Søren's brother uh, Peter uh, became a priest, an occupation Søren thought maybe would be a good idea for himself, but instead he continued his writings. But now, as we discussed earlier, it's mostly written under different pseudonyms. Later follows a few very productive years for Søren. These are some of the books that he released during this time. Either or from 1843 under the pseudonym Victor Eremita. Same year, Fear and Trembling under the pseudonym Johannes de Silencio. Also the same year, The Repetition under the pseudonym Constantine Constantius. And then in 1844, you have The Concept of Anxiety under the pseudonym Vigilius Haufniensis. Then Philosophical Crumbs by Johannes Climacus. In 1845 you have Stages on Life's Way by Hilarius Bugbinder. One funny thing Søren liked to do in his spare time was to walk around the streets of Copenhagen and randomly pick a person for conversation. He even called it his people baths. I do believe he got this from Socrates. In the year of 1946, Søren published his book Concluding Unscientific Postscripts. As the title indicates, it was actually meant to be the end of his authorship. But something happened. During this time in Copenhagen, there was a magazine called The Corsair. And they basically satirized and ridiculed famous people around in Denmark. And Søren inevitably uh, ended up in, as a target when he openly asked them to criticize him. This was probably a mistake. Søren became massively ridiculed. Satirical images were published and his breaking of the engagement were mocked. And all of his pseudonyms were revealed. About the affair, Søren says, and I quote, Every butcher boy believes himself being entitled to insult me from the order of Korsaren. The young students laugh and giggles, delighted over that an, an eminent man is trampled down. Most of the books that I'm going to discuss uh, was written before the whole Corsair affair. But in 1947, uh, Søren started writing again. Uh, like I said before, concluding unscientific postscripts was meant to be the end of his authorship. But, but because of the Corsair affair, he started writing again. Uh, but this time, he writes in his own name, and the books are more outspokenly Christian. Towards the end of Søren's life, he criticized the Danish church. 
he criticized them for merging more and more with the Danish state. He saw the priests as being merely politicians. Here he says in his diary, Every endeavor to accomplish a Christian state is eo ipso unchristian. For all such endeavors is only possible by lowering the demands. This attack on the Danish church had been prepared for quite some time. He had waited for a few preconditions to occur before he would launch the attack. The first being, both his father and Bishop Münster should be dead before the attack. And second, he should himself have acquired a name as a famous theologic writer. To Søren, Christianity should not be an easy religion that doesn't require anything. So lowering the demands is a very bad according to him. Søren probably saw himself like Martin Luther protesting the Catholic Church, but now it's him protesting the Protestant Church. In the year 1855, Søren died only being 42 years old after being ill for over a month. So here now, here he lies in Assistens Churchyard in Copenhagen. The cause of death is disputed. Some think it's tuber it was tuberculosis and some say it was an old injury he got as a child that finally caught up with him. But Søren's ideas are still very much alive. He had a big impact on thinkers such as Heidegger, Wittgenstein, Sartre and Camus. And he continues to influence people even today. So that is the life of Søren Kierkegaard in short. Thank you so much for watching. The upcoming episodes will focus more on his ideas rather than the man. So don't forget to subscribe everyone and uh, remember to click the bell icon. That way you will find out as soon as possible when I post a new video. Also, you can support me on Patreon if you'd like. It will really speed up the process of making these videos. I hope you all have a good one. Take care.